You killed them on Halloween. Superhero movies have really oversaturated everything over the last few decades. There seems to be like three or four coming out every year, and that's just in theaters, but when it comes to darker, more mature, or even serious themed superhero movies, those are becoming increasingly rare, especially those centered around Halloween themed subject matter. Now, of course, there are a handful of these types of movies that may come to your mind for that season, whether it be Hellboy, Spawn, or even Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage, but what about a movie that actually factors Halloween or at least the night of Halloween and what it means for dark and scary people when it comes around every year. What about a movie like that? Well, in my opinion, choosing the ultimate film to watch for this particular season is easy. The Crow is a 1994 supernatural action thriller directed by Alex Proyas. It stars legendary martial artist actor Bruce Lee's son, Brandon, alongside Michael Wincott and Ernie Hudson. Now, this movie has gone on to become a cult classic, and it has a major fan base with a ton of popular recognition. It tells the story of a couple who are horribly murdered on Devil's Night, which takes place a day before Halloween, when the two had planned to get married. The woman was abused and killed by a group of thugs that also threw her would-be husband out of an apartment window. The man's name was Eric Draven, an up-and-coming rock star who played in a grungy band at the height of that music success. Now, the movie basically tells us that long ago, people once believed that crows would help ferry the dead into the afterlife. But sometimes, something so bad happens that the crow comes back to help restless souls set things right. And one year after the tragic events that happened on Devil's Night, a crow taps its beak against the rock star's grave, and Eric Draven rises from the dead aided by that crow in a mission to seek revenge. I thought the police always said freeze. Well, I am the police. And I say don't move, Snow White. You move, you're dead. And I say I'm dead. And I move. Look, guys, just as an FYI, I really really love The Crow, and when it comes to how this movie creates and presents its characters, sets up a dark and grungy world while also providing a tone that is noticeably influential to tons of stuff that would eventually come out later, this is one of the most important superhero films of the 90s. And it is very 90s. This is a movie that I've been a gigantic fan of for years, and it may even be one of the reasons I loved Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom so much when it came out in 2018. I wouldn't be shocked if J.A. Bayona actually used the end battle of this film as an outline for the fifth Jurassic Park movie. From the architecture of the gothic mansion alongside the rain and even someone hanging on the edge of the roof, it's more similar than I think I've ever heard anyone else bring up, and my mind may have been peaked on a subconscious level because of it. Of course, the ending gets compared to 1989's Batman as well, but even if the ending of The Crow wasn't badass, everything else still makes this one hell of an awesome movie, with nearly every scene being incredibly memorable and full of great filmmaking. <laughs> Aren't we all? Now, if you haven't seen this movie already, you really need to do yourself a favor and check it out ASAP because this is one of the most influential cult classics of the 90s and it inspired pretty much every dark, gothic-themed horror slash action movie of the 2000s. All of those female-led box office franchises just a few years later like Underworld, Resident Evil, and even Hugh Jackman's Van Helsing probably took influence from this movie, but the original 1994 classic is 100% the real deal. You're all going to die. The character Brandon Lee plays, Eric Draven, is portrayed as some sort of vengeful Kurt Cobain, or at least what I think people thought Kurt Cobain was like back in the day, and he goes up against some of the most terrible, trashy people you could ever expect to run into in your entire life. On the good guy's side, you get Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters as the main police officer that we follow throughout the story. And by the way, the bad guys are played by some people you've more than likely seen before too. Tony Todd, the candy man himself, plays Grange, while David Patrick Kelly, Sully from Commando, the guy Arnold drops off that cliff, appears as one of the higher-ups that threw Draven out that window, a guy known as T-Bird. By the way, the lesser villains all have fun names like that, Tintin, -tin, Skank, and Fun Boy, all being a part of the chaos. But probably the big standout performance besides Brandon Lee comes from Michael Wincott, who plays the ultimate villain named Top Dollar, the leader of the mercenaries from Alien Resurrection, who in this movie plays a sick, twisted gangster who runs a grunge, metal, industrial club that organizes crime in the city. He's responsible for much of what happens on Devil's Night, so he's obviously the big bad that Eric is gonna have to face in the end. You're him, huh? The Avenger. 
The killer of killers. Nice outfit. Not sure about the face, though. Now, what I think sets The Crow apart from a lot of 1990s superhero movies, or, and really superhero movies in general, is just the fact that the characters are so different from anything you'd really see in like a Batman or a Spider-Man or X-Men movie, especially Brandon Lee's performance as Eric Draven. This guy gives an incredibly emotional performance as someone that's been brought back from the dead, and you really get to see him react and act out things in a very natural state that I think a rock star would do. It's not like a boy becoming a man story like Spider-Man. It's not like an angry guy trying to wrestle with his demons like Batman. It really is a dude that got killed, is pissed off, and does rock star shit when he comes back to Earth. Tell them Eric Draven sends his regards. There's a scene in particular where he goes to a pawn shop to try and figure out what's going on. And when he walks away, he picks up a guitar. And throughout the rest of the movie, you kind of see him use the guitar here and there. And in his downtime, he plays guitar solos and music from his band while he's on top of the roof of where he used to live. And it's just so interesting to see a movie like this get made, especially at the height of grunge. The other thing I really like about the movie is the crow that's connected to Brandon Lee. This animal acts as not only the eyes of the superhero, but also a link to the supernatural world. And when Top Dollar and uh, his girlfriend slash whatever that was going on figure that out, they want to really go after him. Now, again, the characters in this movie are incredible. Top Dollar and the bad guys, these are some of the most evil and vicious people you can possibly think of in a superhero movie. They're also really sick, twisted, and into dark stuff, and they constantly talk about how the eyes, like the eyes of the crow that show Brandon Lee where to go and what to do, are some of the most powerful things on the planet, and they want them for themselves. So when you get to the third act, you get some really crazy stuff that goes down. I don't want to spoil any of it, but I truly do like this movie, and I understand completely why it became a cult classic early on. You know, my daddy used to say, every man's got a devil. You can't rest till you find it. Ernie Hudson does a great job as a cop trying to piece together what's going on in this terrible world where Top Dollar's been ruining the city on Devil's Night for a decade. And there's even a side story with some of the characters where Fun Boy is dating this young girl's mother and there's messages against like blatant drug use and abandonment of your children, as well as looking out for people that have, you know, less fortunate lives than you do. The saying it can't rain every day comes from this film and it's a really memorable quote and it's a really sweet sort of embellishment of hope in a, even the most dark and depraved of times that I think people will really enjoy. And again, this is all set around Halloween. There's just so much stuff going on with crime, grunge music, and wild people in costumes doing wild, crazy things that I think it, it really sets itself apart. Devil's Night is upon us again. A little party, start a bunch of fires, make a little profit. Now, if none of that convinces you to see this movie, the awesome soundtrack may do that, just by how much of a time capsule it is. This really is one of those movies made around a genre or snapshot in time that I think people will get a kick out of with big names and alternative music and metal at the time having music featured on it. Bands like Pantera, Nine Inch Nails, The Cure, and Helmet, all of those guys are there. And the Stone Temple Pilots song, Big Empty, actually premiered on this soundtrack before it was released on their album. And the reason they decided to do that that was because they felt it would be a proper inclusion after the unfortunate passing of Brandon Lee happened while The Crow was filming. Tragedy, it seems, runs in the family. Bruce Lee was a movie star who died young and became a legend. Now his son Brandon is gone as well. So yeah, another big point of this movie's cult classic status comes from that sad detail that even mirrored Brandon's father's passing while working on movies in the 1970s. During the filming of a scene that called for a revolver to be fired at Brandon Lee, the bullet for a dummy round was apparently trapped inside of the weapon, and since I guess nobody checked whether or not that was the case, the 44 Magnum shot out with a ton of force that struck Brandon in the abdomen in a terrible accident. This was the last movie the son of Bruce Lee ever starred in, and Brandon put on 
on an incredible performance that I think people really need to see if they're fans of this kind of stuff. Now after this horrible event occurred, the filmmakers actually used very early CGI to superimpose Brandon Lee's face onto a stunt double in a shot that had to be completed for the film. And since he passed away, all scenes featuring another character named Skull Cowboy, who was played by Michael Berriman from The Hills Have Eyes, were abandoned during rewrites after the incident. Nevertheless, The Crow came out in 1994 and became a massive success that most people agree is a pretty damn cool movie. It was just a sleeper hit when it was in theaters. It made some money, but it was really after the fact that everyone started talking about it and discovering it quickly. Home video was really popular back in the day. I already talked about how Tremors cut a name for itself, and The Crow, it became a classic instantly. I used to watch this all the time on cable, and it became pretty popular pretty fast, both with the film being notable for Brandon Lee's final appearance, as well as the movie being a darker superhero story with a lot of style and a soundtrack that really was a snapshot of 1994. The best way I can describe it is if you're ever looking for an R-rated version of Tim Burton's Batman starring Kurt Cobain in Kiss makeup set around Halloween with supernatural subject matter, well then you just might enjoy The Crow. The Crow is his link between the land of the living and the realm of the dead. I've always really liked this movie, and by the way, there's a particular scene involving Eric walking up to Top Dollar with that face paint that I even think may have influenced the scene in The Dark Knight. This movie was very, very influential, and I know a lot of people have seen it, but not too many people talk about it, which I think is a shame, but hey, those are all just my own thoughts and opinions on this movie. What do you guys think about the film? Have you seen it before, and what are your thoughts on good movies to watch like this around Halloween? Personally, this is the one I immediately go to when it comes to superhero movies, but hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.